What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python programming tutorial with machine learning using scikit-learn. Uh, in this video what we're going to be doing is covering a real quick example of how simple machine learning actually is. And just to illustrate that the bulk of your task is actually not the machine learning, it is the acquisition and structuring and organization of data. But that's not fun, so the first thing we're going to do is show an example. So um, so we're going to go ahead and remove these imports because we're going to do it slightly differently. Uh, but for now, the first thing we're going to do is we need to import matplotlib's pyplot. Uh, if you're not familiar with matplotlib, I have a very, uh, actually a couple, very extensive matplotlib tutorial videos. So uh, search on my channel and you can find those. They should be on just like the main page even. So anyway, uh, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt for short. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the default uh, scikit-learn data set. So scikit-learn comes with um, sample data sets that we can actually just use. So we're going to go ahead and do from sklearn import data sets. And this has, um, you know, the iris data sets. It's got numbers. And I I think it has those Oregon, if you've ever like done any searching of uh, machine learning tutorials, <laughs> like the, the example that people always use is, I want to say it's Oregon, uh, like Oregon house prices, like they did housing prices and then so the idea was you could use machine learning to come up with a perfect algorithm to pricing any house based on, you know, various variables. So I'm pretty sure that one's in there too. Um, but for the most part, I've seen that people complain about using these data sets. And I think the complaint is that af even after you learn how to use scikit-learn, you have no idea how to go out into the real world and do machine learning because you have to get the data somehow and nobody provides you data um, in the format that you that you really kind of need it in. So anyway, especially if you're going to label it as like what well, we're going to be doing stocks and you need to label that stock as buy, 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 all the way up to when it's no longer a buy and it's a sell and sell, 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 sell. We need to be able to um, label our data. No one's doing that for us. So anyway, from scikit-learn, import data sets, and then from sklearn, import SVM, which is short for support vector machine. Uh, support vector machine is a form of uh, machine learning. And basically, um, I can even show you guys what SVM is going to do. Where is my trusty paint? There it is. <laughs> so SVM, real simple. Uh, you're gonna have SVM. It's let's say you've only got you know um, one. Uh, oh man, I always forget this word. I don't know one one variable. Let's say um, there's a special word for it. I'm I'm blanking on the word. Anyway, so you got your axis here, axis here, and you'll end up having a graph, and it's gonna have a bunch of plots on it. Uh, like this. Oops. Let's see. Let's make it big. Boom, 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 boom. And you'll probably, with SVM, generally you'll probably end up having like labeled plots. So it'd be like this. Wow, you won't have a plot like that. <laughs> anyway, so SVM's going to come through and it's going to be like, all right, check it. You've got a group here. Well, SVM's going to do a better job than I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be like, you got a group there. And then uh, they'll even come through and they'll chunk a line like they like they'll just do this. SVM is going to come through and be like, "There's your groups for you because you labeled the groups." So that's what SVM does for you. Um, unsupervised learning is basically like this, just for anyone who's curious. Uh, remember, we had all these orange dots, and then over here, I think we had green. You know, you just would feed the data to the algorithm like this. And then the algorithm is expected to just kind of figure out, you know, how to divide these groups up. Um, it doesn't really know anything about the groups. It's just going to kind of divide them up like that or something. Um, anyway, that aside, that's basically the previous example is what an SVM is going to do for you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and import SVM. And what it's going to do is it's going to divvy up numbers. Uh, so we're going to use the digits data set. Um, and it's going <clears> to <throat> categorize zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights, and nines for us. And then we're going to shove uh, a new version uh, through, and it's going to have to, based on the previous examples, kind of guess for us uh, what that number is. So um, the, the primary focus of machine learning 
is kind of like um, to to skip the the uh, I don't know uh, experience gaining aspect of learning. So anywhere where you you think that just kind of like seat time or, or you know time in the field would gain a lot of experience for you, you can use machine learning to just gain all that experience for you instantly um, so that can help so anyway because like how do you know what a nine is versus an eight or versus a four especially how do you know what the difference is well you've seen like a million of them and chances are you're gonna say that a nine has a closed top and a four does not have a closed top or something like that and so that's basically what the machine is gonna do after seeing a bunch of examples it's gonna be like well they all have all this and some of them vary a little bit but the difference between a four and a nine is it's got you know a either a, a straight line or a curved line or some sort of line at the top, you know, something like that. Anyway, uh, so we've got that. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to say the digits. So this is for the digits data set. Digits equals data sets dot load underscore digits. And this comes with like a whole bunch of data. And uh, you can look at the digits data set if you want. It is, it's like labeled and then you've got your example and you've got um, basically like the not necessarily pixels but basically what makes up that uh, digit um, saved in this so for example we can say you've got all kinds of stuff so we can say we could print uh, digits dot data and actually uh, that's not no parameters there so print digits dot data we can save and run that just to see the output here okay so it's a very long array but anyway this is basically the array of data and you've got data data and then you've got basically like what number is it so we can say digits dot data and we can print uh, digits dot uh, say target for example and then we can even do um, for example um, we can say print digits dot images and zero something like this okay so this is basically the image of the digit um, right here so this is just like an example of a digit and so as you're gonna find too um, one of the more difficult things for machine learning is that we have to convert everything to numbers right um, that's really the only way that we can normalize data. And then after you convert everything to numbers, you'll find that typically people want to convert everything to a zero or a one if possible, or if there needs to be more of an array, uh, a negative one to a positive one. You want to have all of your data be in that range. Um, and it's okay like if your data is in a range from like negative three to positive three or something like that But you want basically all of the data sets to follow that so you wouldn't want like like for example housing prices Let's say you had to normalize that you'd have to normalize that data So like if you've got a house, you know, you we were saying you've got prices of houses for anywhere from 10,000 to 200,000 well, we need to normalize that because we've got you know that data, we've got square footage data, number of bedrooms data, all that data is not really normalized. So we need to kind of like normalize that and put them all on the same scale. Um, so from a negative one to a one, right? Where negative one is equal to 10,000 and then positive one is 200,000 for let's say housing price, uh, stuff like that. So you do have to normalize the data. Um, anyway. Uh, digits images and now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll set up our, our basically our, our classifier so uh, this basically is going to follow the real simple tutorial that's basically on scikit-learn's website so if you've seen that then you'll probably be, recognize some of this code so anyway we're just going to use the same stuff that they did so they had CLF for classifier um, and that equals svm.svc and then you can set gamma here we can you can set this if you want um, and we'll kind of play with gamma in a little bit to show you that it, it matters uh, but for now I just want to show you how quickly we can do a machine learning you know algorithm um, there are also uh, built into scikit-learn there is a functionality to just automatically get gamma for you um, and it'll just kind of automatically pick the best version of gamma using machine learning so uh, um, you can use that as well so even if you don't understand what gamma is at this point that's totally fine but we'll we'll, we'll tweak it and you'll see that it matters <laughs> anyway uh, then we're gonna say X comma Y and we're gonna unpack X comma Y as digits dot data and basically what we want to do is we want to say this is data all the way up colon to the last number 
and then we're going to do digits dot target um, again all the way up to the last number and what we're doing here is we're basically storing all of the answers okay so we have the the data and then we've got the target of that data and we're so and we're doing this all the way up until the very last element so this digits.data contains a bunch of examples so we can just print uh, I don't know what the length is but I'm pretty sure it's pretty large so digits.data print lang digits.data so we have a total of yeah 1797 examples of digits uh, so 0 through 9 actually I think it might be 1 through 9 I'm not sure if they have zeros or not anyway um, so print lang so we have that many examples so we're going to load up 1,796 of the examples, and we're going to use that as uh, 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 learning data. Uh, so we're going to basically uh, send that through and show the machine learning algorithm, hey, these are some samples, these are the examples, this is the value, and then now what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to test you, and we're going to test against the last element, the negative first -th element, and see if it gets it right, right? So we've got the learning set, and then we're gonna actually go and test it against that. So anyway, so we've got this whole testing set here. So this will be our test. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, clf.bit and then xy. And then now we're gonna actually go ahead and call for a prediction. So we're gonna say print, um, print, I'm having a hard time here. Print prediction colon comma clf dot predict and then we're gonna predict digits data the negative first element. So this will be where we actually predict what is uh, what is the negative first element and then we're gonna actually show it. So because we want to see like did the machine get it right. So um, so we're going to do plt.mshow, so this will show the image basically, and we're going to show the image of digits.images minus one, so what is the actual image here, um, and then here, uh, this was mostly just so we can actually see the image, so anyway, cmap equals plt.cm.gray underscore r, and then interpolation equals nearest. Uh, again, don't really worry about this. This is ba basically all this is doing is just we're just showing ourselves the image of the the digit that we're predicting. So you don't really need to understand like what this is doing. Generally, when you show an image, if it's a small image and you, you kind of like blow it up on uh, Matplotlib, it, sometimes it's actually really hard to see the image because it was originally very small and we've zoomed in on this big plot and it's kind of confusing to look at. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Uh, plt.mshow and then finally we just call plt.show. Real simple. So we save and run that and the prediction is that this is a number eight and um, as we can see in the image uh, it's most likely an eight. It looks like it goes like this. It's kind of missing a number here, but uh, the only thing that this would even be close to is like a six or something. So, so we're pretty content. You know, it seems like it it, it knew that number. So the next thing we can do is uh, show like another example. So, what if we did this? What if we change? Um, what if we change the data set that we memorize all the way to the negative? Uh, tenth okay so this will be our, our training set now trains our machine to what was it 1787 now examples uh, then it's gonna fit all of those and fit is kind of this term where um, again you have uh, let's pull up the trusty old paint again and I uh, should have left it up honestly but anyway here's axis one not straight axis two beautiful um, and you'll have you know a bunch of a bunch of data plots here. So let's just say we've got one, twos, and threes. So you've got here's your ones, and then maybe you've got some twos here, and then you have some threes here. And fit what fit is doing is literally fitting a line to the numbers. So fit goes through and he's like, okay, this is basically how this data set goes, right? And if you've ever heard the term overfit, here's how overfit works. Um, it's going to go like this. It's going to be like, okay, so here is um, how the data set works. It's like this. 
and then you know the green is I don't know like uh, like this <laughs> uh, I can't tell if that's even a green or a blue whoops we covered over that blue anyway you get the idea if you ever see like cuz with a low number of uh, variables you can kind of actually see um, you can plot it, right? So if you have up to three dimensions, you can plot that like on your computer and you can see um, how is your fitment going. And if you see squiggly lines like this, you are overfitting and that's a very bad algorithm and you should stop that right away. Um, I don't save. Um, anyway, so that's what's doing. what we're doing here is we're fitting and then um, we're going to go ahead and, and run the prediction and then we're showing it. So, so for example, what if we decide, okay, we're going to predict... Uh, the negative two element. Let's show the negative two element. Save and run that. It's predicting it is a nine, and sure enough, we can definitely tell that's a nine. Um, let's go ahead and do the negative third element, for example. I don't even know what that is. Eight, maybe. <laughs> yes, yeah. It says it's an eight as well. <laughs> it's kind of fun that it pops up uh, before the uh, algorithm, before I can see what the algorithm says. <laughs> zero and uh, it is a zero. So okay, you get the idea. So it's obviously fairly accurate. But what if we change gamma to let's do 0.1. So we saw that that was I believe a zero. Here's a zero. Gamma says and with the changed gamma prediction is a three. Yikes. Let's try uh, negative two here. I forget which one was that nine. The nine was obviously really clearly a nine. So here we got a nine. It says, mm, we think that's a three, obviously quite wrong. Um, so then, so obviously then we, what if we did like gamma is um, negative, or I mean point zero 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 one. So basically dividing it by 10 here. So let's try that now. It knows it's a nine, cool. Uh, let's go negative four again here. It figured out this is a zero. Cool. So um, let's, let's just do one more. Let's do negative six. Hopefully it says it's a four. Yes. So what's what's happening with gamma is like basically um, when you have uh, hopefully this will be the last time I draw in paint. It's not going to be the last time I draw in paint. But basically. Um, a really popular element of machine learning is where you have, um, I wish I had a 3D plot. This is really helpful when you have like a 3D graph. But anyways, um, when you have a, a machine learning script, we have usually what looks to be like a little, you know, curve like this. It makes, whoops, not like that. It's usually like this, right? And the goal is to make it to this, right? This this is our answer right here. And say we start, um, we start right here. And to get to the answer, it's kind of, it's called gradient descent basically. And it's, uh, a lot of times it's kind of envisioned as trying to get down a mountain. Um, so in here, we, it's a 2D graph, but in a lot of senses, it, it's more of a 3D or 4D or 8D or 15D or even more 100D. Um, but the idea is how can we quickly get to the base of this um, this mountain? And so what gradient descent is going to do is it's going to calculate um, a bunch of examples and figure out which example gets it, gets it you know further down the hill basically. So it's going to continue hopping down the hill. And um, what you can do is you can either make gamma um, or the, the actual gradient descent. Um, usually it's referred to as uh, so I, I'm not sure gamma is is what uh, what is happening right in this example because uh, usually it's referred to I believe as alpha or like the learning rate um, and basically it is wanting to get down the hill and you can make the learning rate really high so the jumps might be this big right and so really if the jump is that big you only need to make basically one two three four jumps to reach the base of the hill so your machine learning algorithm would be like lightning fast right it would get there but the problem is what if our jump is this big and we're just having a field day here getting it so we know with two jumps we're not quite there yet and then what ends up happening is you make a jump like this and you've passed it and then now we're thinking oh my gosh we've made a mistake right because this was closer um this is further so then what would happen is it would jump right back 
and it would get like here basically and it'd be like oh shoot we've made a huge mistake let's go back and it would just keep going all the way up here and then you will never reach your example uh, or your answer and so that's a huge problem and but on the on the flip side you can make your jumps you know tiny right and just slowly move down but it might take you like an hour of processing just to get here right eventually you will get to the correct answer but the question is what is the the proper amount of you know leap size to get there quickly efficiently and accurately so uh, just keep that in mind so we'll hit don't save here um, so anyways, uh, that's pretty much it as far as machine learning is concerned. Obviously this video you know, took 20 minutes, but as you can see in this code, it's really simple code. Uh, it doesn't take much. Once you have digits.data, you've got the target, you fit it, you predict, you're good to go. <laughs> right? It's really quick and easy uh, to do this. And this machine learning, uh, what we've done with fit, clf.fit, this is the training right so uh, here's our data set here's where we train the data and we left the last 10 for testing we train the data here and just just for um, concepts training is where you know the scientist knows the answer and then the computer also knows the answer and so the computer is going to fit that data based on the answer it knows then when we actually test the data with the last 10 samples, the computer does not know the answer. It's using the previous answers to kind of come up with the best answer. Then we're making our prediction here. And we found that if gamma was you know, low enough, uh, we, we got the right answer every time. If gamma was too high, we, we messed up quite a bit. So anyway, that's that. Um, it's really simple to do machine learning. As you can see, we did it in very few lines. Um, and for the most part, you will use someone else's algorithm, whether or not you're using, um, I forget what it's called. There's obviously with, with Python, Python's really quick development language. And so a lot of people will use it to kind of prototype. Um, you can also do it. People will use C or Java for machine learning. Again, you're not going to write your own. You're going to use someone else's algorithm. And then there's also a pretty popular machine learning, um, kind of prototyping tool called Octave and you can do a lot of machine learning there. Again, it doesn't really quite matter what you're using because in general, you're going to be spending most of your time organizing your data set to, to work with machine learning. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. In the next video, we'll be talking a little bit more about what, how, what we're gonna do and our project is gonna be uh, analyzing stock fundamental data um, to see if, if we can figure out using machine learning what are the important fundamentals, what kind of algorithm we should invest based on, um, see if there's anything there for us. Uh, so we're going to have to be you know, pulling a bunch of data, uh, organizing that data, and then eventually feeding it through a um, machine learning algorithm. And we'll talk a little bit more too about how to pick a machine learning algorithm that best suits your task. And actually, uh, Scikit-Learn has a wonderful little diagram for how to pick which algorithm to use. It's really great. So I'll probably show that as well. So anyways, um, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, if I misspoke anywhere on this, uh, please let me know. Um, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time. To easily follow along to the next part, you can either click on the link in the video if you have annotations turned on, or you can follow via the playlist link in the description.